It's time for another Wookie Wednesday. Let's do the news and then let's catch up on everything that happened on Hasbro Pulse Fan First Wednesday. Let's do this. I think the best thing for us to do today is jump straight in to the Hasbro Fan First Wednesday releases because there is some great stuff to unpack here. So let's do this. The next group of archive figures have officially been announced on today's event. Where they are going to be Dengar, the Emperor, C-3PO and Lando in Skiff disguise. Lando, it didn't come out that long ago to be honest, I've already got several C-3PO's, I've already got two Emperors. Dengar I need to be honest because I missed him initially the first time he came out, but the other three I kind of already own. I know the Emperor is going to be a good one for a lot of people because not many people have been able to get that new Emperor, so I think the Emperor being re-released is great. Um, now that we are getting into the Return of the Jedi territory for its anniversary, I can see why they're putting out that C-3PO and the obvious uh, Lando as well. Either way, this is a great group of characters, and I think people will, de will definitely jump on grabbing some of these. Uh, me personally, like I say, Dengar's the only one I particularly need here. But what are your thoughts, guys? Do you need any of these ones? Let us know. Jedi Fallen Order is one of my favourite games, and that's why I'm so happy that the Gaming Greats line is going to be getting another character from the game. We are getting the Knight Brother Archer. Whilst this is um, a little bit of a repaint from the last one, it's still pretty cool to get another uh, toned version of, uh, you know, those Knight Brothers because, you know, I really want to build a diorama with a bunch of them. So, yeah, I can see why this is going to be a good one to get. He's got the red skin tone this time. It looks very nice indeed. I can see a lot of people using this for a custom uh, mall as well. Either way, a great addition to the line and I can't wait to get my hands on one. This one is going to be a GameStop exclusive Exclusive, which in the chat on the event did get a bit sour about that because obviously of the cancellations recently of the original Knight Brother from GameStop. A lot of those orders did get cancelled recently, so it has left a bitter taste in some fans' mouths. And that, that was definitely evident from the chat on the live stream. TVC line is getting some love as well. They did only announce this one figure for TVC this time, and it is the 501st Legion. Uh, he, he, very cool figure. It un, apparently, underneath that helmet, it has got the new face technology that they used for the uh, Bad Batch uh, versions. So yeah, I see. I can see it's going to be pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of this one. I'm probably going to skip it myself. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Okay, there is a lot to unpack with this one. TVC are giving us a new playset, which is about, which it looks over the top and ridiculous, but I want one so bad. It is Jabba's throne room. Obviously, we've recently seen this as a, a Bo the Book of Boba Fett mainly takes place in this room, so they are giving us the updated version for TVC. Obviously, you can use it as the original throne room, or you can use it as the Book of Boba Fett version, and it will come with a carded TVC version. Uh, of Bib Fortuna as well, so you don't need to go out and chase down that new one they've released as they are giving us this one. However, it doesn't include the Boba Fett as per the picture says here, but yeah, looks very cool, comes with a ton of accessories, looks absolutely huge. I'm pretty sure they said something like 10 inches tall, um, so I mean, this thing is huge. I cannot wait to get one, apparently it's going to be a Pulse exclusive potentially, I think they said, but either way, I'm definitely going to be grabbing one of these. I oh, Do I break my pre-order rule to get one? Oh, now that is the question. This is something that I've probably been the most excited about in a long time. I love play sets, and that's the main reason I collect TVC, is for the play sets. So this one, I may break my rule of pre-ordering for. Oh, no. <laughs> but what are your guys' thoughts? Will you be grabbing this one? I'd really love to know your thoughts and feelings on this giant play set. Looking ahead into the future, they then discuss the pipeline reveals, which includes the vintage coll collection that are getting an Anakin Skywalker from Episode 2, and also the Mandalorian um, Commando Trooper, which was the one, uh, the Dar Darth Maul's Trooper. Uh, we're getting those in the TVC line, so very happy to see those. Didn't we get an Anakin Skywalker with that look very recently, though, in TVC? I'm sure I got that along with Armadala not that long ago. <laughs> Isn't that classed as episode 2? Anyway, again, a new Anakin. What can I say? We're going to want him once we see Anakin again uh, in Obi-Wan Kenobi. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. That's pretty cool. Archive collection as well from Black Series. Got some pipeline reveals, including Han Solo from The Force Awakens. Do we really need that one again? I'm not sure. But we're going to be getting a new Chewbacca as well, including Grand Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia in Boosh Disguise. I'm pretty sure Grand Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia will be very popular in that line, as I know that Princess Leia has not been revealed, in, uh, has been redone in such a long time. I think she's one of the oldest characters out there now. Uh, I still have the original one. So I can't wait to see what they do to improve upon it to get, you know, to redo her in the archive line. 
Same with Grand Moff Tarkin. His figure's not that old, and I thought the original one looked pretty good, so I can't wait to see what the new one looks like. My favourite reveals from today, though, have to be the pipeline reveals for the Black Series line, which includes, finally, Ayla Sakura! We've wanted her for so long. She's been one of those characters that has been missing from the line, and I'm so happy we're finally getting Ayla Sakura. So, we're getting Ayla Sakura, Darth Maul from Season 7 of Clone Wars to go with the Ahsoka that we got, so an updated version of Maul. Awesome, can't wait to see that. And finally, this character should have been made years ago. Saw Guerrero. He's one of the characters that has been expanded into the larger world, including Clone Wars, including Rebels. He's been in Jedi Fallen Order. He's been in Rogue One. He's been everywhere, man. Why has he not got a figure yet? So happy we're finally getting the classic Forest Whitaker look of the Saw Guerrero character from Rogue One. Very happy with that reveal. Cannot wait for it to come to the Black, the Black Series line in the future. Awesome reveals. That was all the news from the Hasbro Pulse Fan First Wednesday, so let's move on with the rest of this week's news. And of course, we've got a segment from Ryan Speaks Geek and some other good stuff as well as the Book of Boba Fett final episode review. So guys, let's jump straight into the rest of this week's Wookiee Wednesday. The Disney Store mini brands appear today on the Target website. As you can see, there is a multitude to collect from Star Wars, Marvel, and Disney and Pixar itself. Each of them are a representation of the toys that you would have seen back when the Disney stores were open. These were all the Disney store exclusive merchandising, including the Disney classic dolls, the Star Wars action figures, the toy box series, the animators line, and the Marvel talking figures. There's a bunch of the like the boxed Buzz Lightyear and so many more to collect. There are so many, in fact, that they've included this awesome list, which includes commons, rares, and so much more. You can grab toys from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars, and even collect the actual uh, shelving units that, that we use in Disney stores to stack them on, or actual shopping bags to put them in. There are so many awesome figures to collect, I cannot wait to try and get them all. Me and Miss Soup are all uh, very excited to try and get them, and we're going away to America in March, so hopefully we're going to try and pick a few of these up while we're there. So if I can review them while I'm away, I will do. So stay tuned to the channel for more information on this as it evolves. Star Wars The Black Series also announced we're going to be getting the 6 inch Dark Trooper coming very soon. It does look to be another one of the random deluxe style figures as it's going to retail at about $33.99 and it will be available in spring of 2023. So a little bit of a wait for this one. However, if you go to StarWars.com you will find more information. It is available to pre-order right now. Um, it does look very cool though. It's obviously based on the Dark Trooper that we got to see at the end of Mandalorian Season 2. And does look very cool. But yeah, that price puts me off a little bit. Um, obviously, you, you don't want a few of these. You want to army build them. But at that price, it's going to be hard to try and army build this one. However, I'll probably be grabbing at least one for my collection. So stay tuned and I probably will do a review of that one. Star Wars The Vintage Collection 375-inch Dinder Jarin, the Morak figure, will become available at a retail price of $14.99, available at fall of 2022. He is available for pre-order. You can see StarWars.com for further information. But this is a Kenner-inspired figure brought to us by The Vintage Collection. It is Dinder Jarin in his Morak outfit. Looks very cool, actually. It's uh, obviously from, from The Mandalorian, and uh, it's got some great accessories with him, fully posable head, arms, legs, and all that good stuff that you usually get. It's got some premium deco detail on there, and just looks really good, actually. Um, I'm definitely thinking about grabbing this one, um, just because, yeah, it's... An, it's if anything, you can put the helmet on and use it as another trooper as well, so it doubles up as a figure. Um, you can either have him, you know, without the helmet on or with the helmet on, so that's why I like those kind of figures. You can always double them up for your uh, displays and dioramas. Hello, Brian Speaks Geek here on Wiki Wednesdays. What am I going to talk about this week? Uh, well, not Book of Boba Fett yet, because at the time of recording this, I haven't seen it. So uh, I'm hoping that future me is like, yes, it was so good. Um, so... Hi, future Ryan Speaks Geek. Uh, what am I going to talk about today? I've got another item that I've picked up this week at a toy fair that's not Star Wars that I'm going to use for Star Wars. So once again, I'm going to share it with you. This might be a thing I do every week because I've got a lot of stuff like this. It is from a train set, no less. This is a Hornby Dino Safari train set piece. The track was meant to go along the back there, but this is going to be my new Imperial compound. It's got a sliding door, which is pretty awesome. But, you know, think about this. Spray paint this little gunmetal grey. Some of these stickers are actually, I think I'm probably going to keep because they kind of fit nicely. So I'll probably get them off 
very safely. Spray paint, I think, these into maybe, again, like a, maybe a different kind of grey, black. But, you know, put some nice sort of, you know, imperial logos, maybe on the circle bits here. All around, really. I mean, there's just a lot I could do with this. Could have, you know, ATST in here. Maybe one of the mini rigs, like the ISP-6 or something like that. Or, you know, I mean, I've got one of the rollers here. But, you know, you could have that with a good couple of Imperial troops. Or you could just have a little garrison all lined up. Proper, like, Emperor's Visit style. But that's my one. So it's the Hornby Dino Safari. It's going to make a great addition to a Star Wars display. In other vintage news this week, um, Stan Solo's Banthers, vintage-style Banthers, have actually started shipping. People have got them in hand, so look around the internet to see some of those or visit his Etsy. But also, his Garindin figure, you know, long nose, uh, you know, the uh, the snitch from A New Hope, uh, a whole new mould, uh, vintage style. Also, the vintage slave layer have also started shipping. Apparently, mine are on their way. I've got, uh, I'm very excited. I'll be doing reviews on them on my channel. But that is pretty much it for vintage news uh, that I can think of off the top of my head. So thanks for watching and back to you, Super Sorrel. It's that time of the week again. It's time to talk Book of Boba Fett, the final episode of the season. So guy, guys, obviously remember, spoilers ahead here. Book of Boba Fett, it's been a good one. The uh, last couple of episodes obviously turned into the Book of Mandalorian, but <laughs> I like the way they did that. And I think that's going to be a, the a reoccurring theme going forward in all of the television series. I think there's always going to be something that's going to, like, take... Like, we're going to get so many episodes based on the character that the TV show is based upon. So, like, this time it was Boba Fett. But then towards the end, we're going to start seeing other characters bleed into it, like Mandalorian, so that it keeps up with the timeline and continually moves the story along. Because if they were just to keep doing Mandalorian Season 1, Mandalorian Season 2, Mandalorian Season 3, it would get very boring very quick. So, by keeping it fresh, by introducing new characters and telling stories from their perspective, but then including the characters we're used to, like Mando and Grogu and Luke and all the rest of it, that's a good, surefire way of keeping the story progressing without constantly having to keep going back in time and then moving forward and back in time moving forward. Everything's constantly moving. I like that idea. And like I say, I think we'll see that going forward with like the Ahsoka TV series. I think we'll see other characters and where you know what they're now up to. Um, as time goes on. Um, it's to do with Book of Boba Fett. The whole series was great. I like the what I, I like what they did. It closed a little bit too neat for me. There was no I didn't feel gripped to want to know what happens next. Everything kind of just like Boba uh, Boba Fett and Shand and all his you know all his all his cronies are now happily in you know ruling the city and the people love them. Mando and Grogu have jetted off into space and into the sunset, happily together, reunited. There's no story there. That's it. It's done. You know what I mean? There was nothing to draw me back in that makes me go, ooh, Mando season three, can't wait for that. Admittedly, can't wait for it. Love Star Wars, can't wait to see where, where we go next. But there was nothing to make me go, ooh. And let's be honest, the post credit scene with Cobb Vanth, were we not expecting that anyway? We saw that Cobb Vanth got shot in the shoulder anyway. He didn't get shot in the heart. He didn't get shot in a mortal wounded place. He just got an, he got wounded. He got shot there. <laughs> the, you see the you see the blaster hit him there. So what are they going to do? Give him a bionic arm now? Yeah, you know, for me it just felt like it, I, I wish there was something else. I wish we'd have seen something that drew us back in to make us go, oh my god, I can't wait to see what happens next. Maybe that, that's because we're going back in time. The next television series is obviously going to be uh, in May. More than likely, it's going to be airing on May the 4th. And it's going to be Obi-Wan. So we are going back in time again to um, the, the time era before before Episode 4. So post-Rebels, maybe, sort of territory. Um, no, early Rebels territory, won't it? It'll be the time of... Yeah, it'll be the time of when he's in Tatooine overlooking Luke. Maybe they'll pick up where Rebels kind of left us, where he's just killed Maul. I don't know what to expect, really. Uh, maybe that's why they've left it a bit closed off. Maybe the new one will show us where we're going to go next. Maybe it'll reveal new things that we don't quite know yet. Um, I do think we'll see BK, you know, the, the Wookiee. I think we'll see him again, definitely. Because uh, he did feature in some in some Doctor Aphra comics with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, in some flashbacky scenes and stuff. So we have seen that already play out in the comics. 
So I don't see why they wouldn't reintroduce a younger BK doing those things. I think it would be a, a great nod to Mandalorian and to the greater universe to show all these shows all knitted together somehow. Obviously, there is obviously the chance of a, a guest appearance from Ahsoka. There is guest appearance possibilities from... Obviously, Yoda is still alive at this point. He's just isolated on Dagobah. That doesn't mean we won't see Obi-Wan and Yoda force connecting or uh, something like that. Like like what we saw Rey and Kylo Ren do. Likewise, we're going to be seeing Anakin. So there's, I would like to see maybe Anakin and Ahsoka meet again. That could be very cool. But I'm not sure how they'd do it. Obviously, um, the, the actress playing Ahsoka... Uh, could the de-age her maybe a little bit with the makeup and stuff? I'm not sure how they do it. But it's very interesting and I can't wait to see what they do with it. And uh, yeah, other than that, Book of B B the Book of Boba Fett was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. What did you guys think? Oh, one thing I did want to say. Luke Skywalker sent a baby across the galaxy on his own with a roid. That's just... <laughs> what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments down below. So guys, thank you very much for tuning into this Fan First Wednesday slash Wookie Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember guys, if you did enjoy this video today, leave us a comment down below and make sure you smash that subscribe button and do the call of the Wookie. Thank you very much for watching guys. Until next time, may the force be with you.